Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the CDSL Q4 FI24 conference call hosted by HDFC Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star 10 0 on your touch turn phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I know. Ladies and gentlemen, please note that CDSL does not provide specific revenue or earnings guidance. Anything said on this call which reflects CDSL's outlook for the future or which could be constituted as forward-looking statement must be reviewed in conjunction with the risks that company faced. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Amit Chandra from HDFC. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, operator. So good morning everyone. On behalf of SDFC Securities, we welcome you all to the CDSL quarter 4 FI24 earnings call. Today we have with us the management team of CDSL, represented by Mr. Nehal Bora, MD and CEO, Mr. Giri Samisera, the CFO, and other senior leaders. Now we will start with a brief overview of the quarter by Mr. Nehal Bora and then we will open up for the question and answer session. Thank you and over to you, Nehal sir. So thank you, Amit, for the introduction. A very, very good morning to everyone and thank you for joining us today to discuss CDSL's financial results for the full year and fourth quarter of the financial year 2023-24. We've provided a comprehensive investor presentation on our website for your convenience. I'm joined by the CDSL Group's leadership team today and we're happy to share our achievements with you. But before we dive into our company's performance, Let's take a look at some key aspects of the securities market. Starting with the broad capital market landscape, the equity turnover has seen a significant increase of more than 50%. Particularly noteworthy is the fourth quarter, which experienced a 126% growth on the year-on-year -year equity turnover, marking it as an exceptional quarter for the entire securities market. As for CDSL, this has been a special year for us as we celebrated our 25th year of existence. In, in line with the celebration and as for the momentum of growth in the capital markets, we've also seen an increase in the number of DMAT accounts opened. About one crore plus DMAT accounts have been opened in the fourth quarter of 23-24, which is the highest in any quarter since our inception. These kind of achievements are a testament of the growing trust in the Indian capital markets. Our financial performance reflects the trust and efficiency in the capital markets. Uh, as, a, as a part of our performance, the board of CDSL has recommended a final dividend of 19 rupees per equity share and a special dividend on account of our 25th year anniversary celebration of rupees 3 per equity share, totaling to rupees 22 per equity share. All this is subject to shareholder approvals. Coming back to the trust in the Indian capital markets to further enhance this trust and market efficiency, we've introduced several in initiatives in the past year. These include the optional T plus zero settlements, easier the registrations for basically the alternative investment funds and the foreign portfolio investors, the facilitation of ASPA and secondary markets, the electronic consolidated account statement in 23 languages, and multilingual uh, services on our website, at, which is all free to the market. These initiatives are aimed at promoting the inclusivity and accessibility of all investors. As we transition from our 25th year and move to the next phase, we remain steadfast to our commitment towards our efforts towards enhancing trust in the financial ecosystem and empowering the Atmanirvata. I would like to express our gratitude to all our stakeholders, maybe the SEBI, uh, all the other regulators, the issuers, the depository participants, the beneficial owners, the employees and all other market participation participants for their support towards CDSL. I would also like to extend my heartfelt appreciation to our investors whose trust continues to drive us forward. Our unwavering focus remains 
on creating value for all our stakeholders and enhancing the Indian securities market to the next level. Thank you for your continued support and trust in us. I will now hand it over to the Chief Financial Officer. Thank you, Nehal. Good morning to everyone. Uh, speaking on quarterly uh, performance, on a consolidated basis, the total income for the quarter ended March 2024 has increased by 86% to rupees 267 crore as against uh, rupees 144 crore during the same quarter during the previous year. The net profit for the quarter uh, ended March 2024 has increased by 105% at rupees 129 crore as against 63 crore for the same quarter during previous year. Uh, for the uh, full financial year on a consolidated basis, uh, uh, as on 31st March uh, 2024, the total income has increased by 46%. Okay, so I will restart the financial number once again. Uh, speaking on quarterly performance on a consolidated basis, the total income for the quarter ended March 2024 has increased by 86% to Rs. 267 crore as against 144 crore for the same quarter during the previous year. Uh, the net profit for the quarter ended March 2024 has increased by 105% at Rs. 129 crore as against 63 crore for the same quarter during the previous uh, year. For full financial year 23-24, uh, on a consolidated basis, the total income has increased by 46% at Rs. 907 crore as against 621 crore for the previous financial year. The consolidated net profit has increased by 52% to Rs. 420 crores as against 276 crore during the previous financial year. On a standalone quarterly basis, the total income uh, has increased by 82% to Rs. 205 crore as against 113 crore for the same quarter during previous year. The net profit on a standalone uh, basis uh, for the quarter ended March 2024 has increased by 89% to Rs. 97 crore as against Rs. 52 crore for the same quarter during the previous uh, uh, year. Uh, speaking on the standalone uh, financial year 23-24 numbers, the total income has increased by 37% to Rs. 743 crore as against 544 crore uh, during the previous financial year. The net profit on standalone basis has increased by 34% to Rs. 363 crore as against 272 crore for the, uh, during the previous financial year. Now I shall request the Sunil Alvaris to give an update about the operation of the wholly owned subsidiary CDSL Ventures Limited. Over to you Sunil. Good morning everyone. Uh, I am pleased to report the figures for CDSL Ventures Limited. Uh, the total operational income increased by 65% for FY24, okay, as compared to FY23. That is, it was at 169 crores as compared to 102 crores for the previous year. The other income increase is increased by 62% from 11 crores to 19 crores. As a result, the total income increased by 65% from 114 crores to 188 crores. Uh, as far as expenses are concerned, there was an increase of 54% in the in expenses in FY24 from 49 crores to 76 crores. As a result, the profit before tax increased by 72% from 65 crores to 112 crores and the profit after tax increased by 76% from 48 crores to 86 crores. With this, now I'd like to open the open the floor for question and answers. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking the question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for the moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Swarna Bukharji from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for a good set of numbers. Uh, I have three questions. Uh, first one on the number of folios. So I just wanted to understand from you that the number of folios, uh, billable folios, how it has moved between uh, FY23 and FY24. Uh, if you could give some colors so that we can understand how the annual interest charges can be from first quarter onwards. Uh, that is the first question. Second is, uh, in terms of the uh, two opportunities which might give us uh, 
some incremental fraction on the top line front. Uh, just wanted to understand on the unlisted uh, companies, uh, the recent regulation. If you had been, if you could give us some idea about what opportunity sizes we were looking at, what could be the number of potential number of companies uh, that uh, you can target uh, uh, for this financial year and overall opportunity size. I understand that it's a moving target, but at, at the current standpoint, it's some uh, idea you can give. And uh, thirdly, on the insurance, e-insurance uh, side, uh, with the new uh, uh, new uh, regulation, how how do you look at the how do you look at the landscape, uh, and what could be our potential opportunity side? Thank you. So the first question is a forward-looking statement. Uh, so we'll not able. We don't give forward guidance. So I would not be able to uh, give an answer. Uh, the point in question is it depends on the polios which have happened in the previous financial year, which I get billed to the companies uh, in the first quarter. So once the first quarter results, uh, whatever would be announced, you will have some perspective at uh, that stage. Uh, on the second question, uh, on the unlisted company, uh, as I had said in my last investor call also, uh, the deadline is September 2024. And it has conditions of uh, private companies which have a turnover of 40 crores or share capital of 4 crores. But only when these companies would like to either raise capital or transfer any capital, that's the time the DMAT will uh, be required to be done on a compulsory basis. So uh, it will have to be wait and watch uh, because there are these conditions only when they get triggered, that's the time the DMAT opportunity will come into play. It is not a kind of a simple rule. It has certain ifs and buts, so only when those, all of them get satisfied, it will move. So it will be difficult to predict what will be the population at this stage. We'll have to wait and watch as uh, the further quarters move forward. On the insurance side, uh, uh, there has been um, a few amount of changes, but it's kind of really work in progress. We have a full team now looking at our insurance with the repository. I had spoken about it about two or three quarters uh, before. Uh, so we have now a team in place. Uh, and uh, uh, we have basically the right uh, the building blocks to ensure that uh, this kind of uh, the op opportunity would really translate into business as we move forward. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prakash Kapadia from Spark PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. I had two questions. Uh, if you know, you could get a sense of what is the mark to market gain in the other income for the whole year. And uh, second, you know, what is the employee base as on date versus last year at a group level? And the impact of salary hikes in any will be felt in Q1, right? Is that the right understanding? Those were my questions. I'll ask the CFO to answer. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so I will answer you on the on the count of employees. This year we have closed at 335 uh, as a count, uh, CDSL, and last year it was 279 employees. Okay. Uh, in Three thirty five is at the group level, right? No, this is a CDSL. CDSL count. Okay. And mark mark gain on investment uh, uh, is thirty seven crore as on thirty first March uh, twenty four. Okay. And uh, the increment uh, would be obviously factored in the next quarter of the next financial years. In in the Q one. Okay. okay. Yes. Thanks. I'll join back if I have more questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Chandra from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. 
So my question, first question is on the insurance opportunity. So obviously you mentioned that uh, still not clear, but uh, as in the regulation it mentioned that from 1st of April uh, all policies uh, will be have to be issued in the uh, like digital format. So is it uh, fair to assume that still there is ambiguity in terms of what this digital format means or are we seeing uh, traction in terms of uh, uh, the EIA account is being created? And also the market share that we have uh, in terms of the EI account is still very low. So what's the strategy out there in terms of are we planning to be like aggressive on the insurance side or it's too early as of now? And second would be on the uh, cost side. Obviously, we have seen you know, fairly strong jump in the revenues. But uh, correspondingly, the, uh, the cost also has been on the higher side. And especially technology cost has been inching up, uh, especially in the last one and one and a half years. So, uh, uh, now from here on, uh, is it uh, all the investments in technology over or still, uh, you know, we have to expand uh, our uh, technology capability in terms of handling the higher volumes? So, uh, on the insurance side, uh, it's the regulation is yet getting evolved. Uh, I think companies, insurance companies are required to issue the certificates uh, or the insurance policies in a digital format but what happens about the old and so on. these are all things which are get kind of thing evolving and we will see uh, in terms of our strategy uh, it's the entire tech stack which is uh, which we are contributing to and hence the entire move towards an online technological impact or footprint on the insurance side is where we propose that we should be able to. But these are will take some time because uh, kind of building on this will take the market has to really understand what are basically the nuances, etc. So it's basically an infrastructure company. Uh, so it takes time for it to build up, but we are very, very hopeful and uh, we have put in our uh, people there, our technology there, so we'll see how it goes forward. Hmm. On the cost, uh, on technology, uh, technology and people are the two main costs for CDSL. And uh, this will continue to, we will continue to in invest in that uh, because we have to ensure that uh, the value proposition remains, uh, both in terms of uh, with the infrastructure as well as with the applications which are being used and uh, to ensure that uh, and these are all kind of going to it sees a process of change so we'll have to continue to remain invested uh, though it's a uh, uh, future uh, question so I'm not able to give too many details but uh, in terms of uh, our focus remains on uh, in investing in technology and people as we go forward. Okay. And sir, one last question. So, uh, how do you see the regulatory environment? Because we have seen some uh, you know, regulatory tightening on the exchange side. So, in terms of the, uh, know, uh, on, in terms of the like, regulatory risk, do you see any kind of an risk in terms of pricing? Because we have been doing so well on volumes. So, is there any kind of a risk that you see on the pricing side? Uh, I'm not able to give a definite answer here because uh, I think this is again in the future. It's also contingent on what the regulator thinks. Uh, but I think uh, the costs, the uh, uh, pricing is approved by uh, SEBI in case of uh, depositories. So it's taken on record and then it's taken forward from there. So I think we'll see how it goes forward. Okay, so thank you and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rishabh from RBSA Investment Manager. Please go ahead. Hey, hi, sir. So talks of single limit for all types of investments have been going on since long. But based on, say, your discussion with various authorities, uh, what level of discussions are going on, sir? Can we see any light here in the next, say, near future, sir? Just want to understand your thoughts here. So I think it's a process of uh, regulatory change. Everything happens. I think the account aggregator model has uh, is in the process is getting picked up. 
so we'll see how it goes forward uh, how that will get linked to a single demand uh this is uh, a very long term kind of proposition and will have to be seen uh, on how and which framework format it will come in obviously the basically the ease of doing business is a focus of all uh, the central government as well as all the regulators uh it will move towards uh, that kind of uh, framework is uh, what we all hope but uh, it will be difficult to really predict at this stage as to how and what framework form and etc right so how much incremental cost for stick we have to do if say this comes in the next 2 3 years is there any ballpark range or any percentage of current investment that you have made how big investments do we have to make for this Randall, such huge volumes that it will be difficult to predict because we don't know in what format framework the uh, new framework if at all it will come uh, so first we'll have to really observe what the framework if at all it comes and then we'll only able to really assess anyway we don't give any uh, forward looking on future statements so i'll i would not be able to give you a specific answer on this okay sir thank you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Supratim Dutta from Amrit Kapil. Please go ahead. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. I have three questions. One is on the cost front. You know, there has been a significant jump in you know both employee and tech cost in the uh, depository business, the standalone business. And if I look at the subsidiaries, there has been a significant jump in the tech cost in the fourth quarter again. So, if you could just explain to us, you know, what are the areas you are, you know, investing at the standalone level in terms of employee and tech, and in the subsidiary where has the tech investment gone? That would be very helpful. Uh, the second question is on the folio. I understand you don't give the folio numbers, but could you give us a sense of, you know, what has been the growth in folios uh, this year, by 24 versus last year? And lastly, if you could give us a breakdown of the other income between cash, e-voting, and other, that would be very helpful. Thank you. So the first cost, uh, technology has been all around on infra, on application, on uh, security, on network. So it's an all round because with the increased volumes, number of DMAT accounts growing fast, uh, that needs to kind of keep a pace with that but more importantly we are an infrastructure company so we will have to kind of preempt uh, also the potential uh, really growth so to ensure that the technology because it takes time to build technology and therefore it has been all round similarly uh, there has been a similar kind of uh, uh, technology uh, growth which is seen in million subsidiaries uh, CDL has also seen a good growth so we need to really invest in technology uh, out there also. So people and technology is something which will continue, and these things don't happen very fast. It uh, takes time for you to invest in both these. So you need to really pre-plan in future, uh, uh, in kind of really uh, uh, in advance as to how you will be really investing in this. So that is the uh, reply to your first question. Your second question was uh, the second question was on the breakup of the other income. So other income largely consists of uh, e cash charges of 9.37 crore, e voting charges of 4.42 crore, and uh, miscellaneous income in terms of user facility charges, account maintenance charges, and in and like of such uh, such income heads. So e voting was 4.42, right? 4.42, yes. Yeah. And my second, uh, I had another question on the folio growth. If you could give us that, that would be good. We don't uh, give those numbers out in the okay, public domain, so I'm sorry, we will not be able to give okay. that. Okay. Uh, and just one follow-up question. So you, you said you have made investments on the tech side in infra architecture, security, and you know, similarly corresponding employee investments have been made. So. If I could understand with the current infrastructure in place, how many folios or you know DMAT accounts would you be able to service? See, it is not uh, just folios and DMAT accounts. There are a lot of new products. For example, T plus zero has come in. 
that will need new uh, processes a new in aif uh, processing is coming so it's uh, it's not just a simple a simplistic answer that how many folios you can do or etc uh, it's a combined it's a combination of various factors which come into play also new kind of value propositions which are being put into the system to make it easier for people to trade etc for example in e cash is now in multiple languages so these are some of the things so therefore it is not linked to the folios it's linked to the overall processing with the system is expected to do with a lot of features which are coming in in addition to the load which is increased okay thank you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratiksha, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Am I audible? Ah uh, yes, please. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yes. So firstly, uh, congratulations to the CBSE team for putting a great set of numbers, and uh, also I'd like to congratulate the health staff for this uh, CEO of the year he shared what. Uh, I have. Uh, Couple of question from my side. Firstly, I mean, uh, as uh, some of uh, has already asked on the same question, like is insurance repository. So, is there any uh, pricing structure which is finalized by the CTO so that uh, how 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 are the individual policy will create an account and how CTO will be charged for the account creation or maybe for the maintenance of those accounts? And uh, secondly, I mean, just uh, wanted to understand that you know, after completing that twenty fifth year of uh, operation. And uh, having enough reserves and cash to in uh, consideration for any private or business, so that that would be my question. Oh, Pratik, can you repeat the second question? Your line is a little unclear. I cannot follow your question clearly. Or can you come closer to the mic? Yeah, sure. Is that okay now? Yeah, it's better. Yeah, yeah, okay. So just wanted to understand that uh, as you mentioned in that investor presentation, that CBSL uh, completed almost 25 years of Silver Jubilee, and uh, as I understood that a uh, lot of uh, cash on the balance sheet as well, and uh, uh, adequate cash reserves. So, is there any plan for any kind of corporate action like buyback or bonus or any special dividend going forward? So uh, we have given a special dividend, which is obviously subject to approval of shareholders. Uh, for a 25 years, so it's 19 plus 3, 22 rupees. Uh, the remaining part will have to be seen and assessed as we move forward. So I will not able to give any specific answer on that. Yeah, oh, and on the first question, that is any pricing structure for insurance repository. For the uh, for the insurance repository. Yeah, yeah. So the insurance repository, the pricing structure uh, is uh, as I think it should be there. Yeah. So for the insurance sector, pricing structure is uh, is divided into two parts: creation of EIA and uh, uh, annual maintenance. So maintenance is is rupees twenty five, okay, which is charged to the insurance company and not to the uh, holder of the policy. For creation, uh, one time charge of twenty is uh, levied on the insurance company. So these are the two recurring charges, uh, which are charged to the insurance companies and not to the not to the policy holders. And I think you'll find this on the insurance, Web, insurance website. website yeah, that's the RL website. Okay, okay, sir. Yeah, and all the best for the coming quarter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Miraj from Arjun Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Congratulations on a very good set of results. Um, I had two sets of question, and one thing I, one of the points I missed out, I just wanted you to clarify that. Uh, the clarification part is that uh, one of the earlier participants had asked you regarding the insurance uh, evolution in the insurance segment with the recent announcement for. Uh, uh electronic issuance and you had mentioned something that it is still evolving can you just repeat that part i missed that part yeah so the point is that the law is out how this will pan out between what the insurance companies will do what the insurance repositories will do how will the value chain work all this is kind of in the process of early evolution that's what i said 
understood but uh, based on the timeline uh, the electronic issuance would have started already right yeah they could have started so the insurance companies can do it themselves also or they can kind of outsource it to an insurance repository so both those models are there so how it will finally pan out what is good for the market what is the value proposition for the market is something which will have to kind of evolve as we think Understood. I uh, just want to understand the, the point you mentioned that insurance companies can do it by themselves. I believe, sir, that they have to go through a repository only for this to maintain it in electronic form. Um, is it uh, possible for? No, no. I don't think so. It is only through repository. It could be themselves or it could be there. But I'll need to check this with my insurance team. Uh, unfortunately, is not there today. The CEO of the insurance repository. Uh, but uh, if you I uh, want you can send us an, e- an email and we will have it replied. Understood. Okay. Uh, my question regarding this insurance uh, repository part is that as of uh, our annual report FY23 for uh, the insurance repository business, uh, LIC is not uh, tied. Yeah, we are not tied up with LIC. So in the current financial year, have we tied up with LIC because they are one of the largest insurance issuing agency? Okay. So the process and effort is all going on uh, again it's all futuristic so whenever uh, uh, we will have that we will uh, kind of basically disclose that but we generally don't talk about specific insurance companies uh, on this call understood okay i'll connect with you offline for that and my second question uh is that uh, regarding the t plus zero settlement and instant settlement uh we had started with 25 scripts uh, only so just wanted to understand the progress on that part uh, uh, uh are we moving ahead with increasing the scripts over there uh, what what kind of progress are we making over there so if you see the sebi press release it clearly talks about uh, this is the beta phase and uh, they will see how much people, how many people have participated, has there been any issues, etc. And uh, based on that, we SEBI will take that call uh, whether it has to be increased in what framework, through how many stocks, etc. So those all uh, be nuances. You should just pay attention to the uh, press release, if any, which will get issued by SEBI in this regard. Mm-hmm. Understood, perfect. But uh, based on our technological developments, there are no hiccups in the process as of yet, right? We have been part of the ecosystem, so we have uh, seen it uh, go fairly smoothly till now. There have been no issues, at least from the CBSL end. Uh, I can mainly talk about myself, but I think in overall, uh, I don't see there has been any issues. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. I have a few more questions. I'll just get back in the queue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhukar from Nuama Wealth. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, morning. Uh, congratulations on our great set of numbers. Just a uh, uh, couple of questions from my side. Uh, first one is insurance repository uh, thing. Uh, so 20 rupees per new account creation and 25 rupees, is it per account maintenance or is it per policy? And uh, second, so, so, but, but one account can have, uh, policies from many different insurance companies. So who will pay that 25 rupees? See, I think I would request you can send us an email. We don't have our insurance colleagues <coughs> in the room. I'll uh, have that uh, specifically replied to so that uh, it is actually done. If you can send across this uh, query on email, we will have it replied. Okay, I'll do that. And the other thing is also, uh, see, I, I see you in in your annual report, FI23, I think the insurance repository revenue is about 5 million rupees. Uh, but obviously the number of policies is a lot more. So are you actually making that amount? Uh, that's the other question. Um, in, if you can answer that. You're making that amount mean? I don't understand. On a per policy basis, how much are you making? Or, I mean, is, is, are these that great? So I would recommend, I just, uh, yeah, send across, uh, your 
query. But see, again, see, it's a process of some policies are uh, already there, uh, which have to be taken from really the insurance company. Some is getting newly opened. So there are various uh, very nuances to that. So I would again request you just send us your questions on really the insurance uh, repository, and uh, we will have them replied. Uh, all right, sir. And a uh, couple of other questions on the online data charges. They've uh, moved up quite sharply. So I wanted to know, uh, is it majority with the new account uh, openings or is it more with fetch? And uh, uh, I believe the, uh, the, new, the total record created should be around uh, 7 uh, million right now. Uh, can, uh, can you sort of clarify on that also? That will be helpful. And uh, uh, finally, uh, your other charges, what portion of it uh, ha is regulatory charges? And they, they seem to be uh, uh, on the higher side. So I wanted to understand what is the driver of that. Yeah, so Saras, you need to answer this. So in the last financial year, both uh, the number of records created and uh, number of records fetched have gone up substantially, which added to the overall uh, KYC income. Uh, what was the second question? Sorry, I didn't get that. So the the number of uh, records that we have right now, uh, if you can give that number out. We actually don't, uh, you know, give off that number. So. Uh, all right. I, I think we don't give that number right now. Uh, okay. And uh, 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 if the other charges, uh, how much is the regulatory cost? And uh, uh, the expenses are higher. So what are what is driving that actually? So the regulatory cost uh, for the full financial year is uh, almost 38 crore in this financial year and uh, this is directly linked as a percentage of the operating revenue. So higher operating revenue, this charge would be on a higher side. Okay. And and what is the formula? Is it like uh, what? It's 5% it was... regulation, regulation prescribes that 5% of your operating profits needs to be contributed to the investor protection fund. So majority charge is on account of this number. But it seems 38 crores would be much more than that 5% number, right? I don't think so. You have to look at operating profit and then arrive at this number. And this number is inclusive of that uh, expenses. So it works, uh, uh, you know, we have to assume that this expenditure is already there and then work out 5% of the operating profit. That's how it is calculated. So, uh, like your FI24 EBIT is about 462 crores. So, you have to work out operating profits. It cannot be on EBIT. The point is trying to make it as a formula which uh, has to be put in place to arrive at this 5% which needs to be debited. It's not a straight application on the profit numbers. Understood. I'll, I'll take some more details with you offline. Uh, and uh, uh, apart, so that I think is the main driver of uh, the other expenses, or are there other big drivers as well? What was this number last year? Last year, this number was how, how much was this regulatory number last year? Last year, the, the uh, regulatory cost was uh, 26 crores. This year, it is 38 crores. 38 crores. Understood. All right, thank you. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Agarwal from VT Capital. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my question was on your transaction charges. They have increased significantly uh, year on year as well as quarter on quarter. But the revenue per demand, if we calculate it in that manner, it's been quite volatile. I suppose... The only component of that is are the delivery charges that are deducted when when a, when a when a trade takes place so, uh, in the in the delivery segment. Uh, is that right, or is there any, any other component to that as well? 
No, there is also very big pledge charges, very margin pledge charges. There is uh, maybe the debit charges. So yeah. it's a, a combination of various other uh, transactions which are happening. Okay. So the debit charges, like it, it depends on. Uh, I mean, could you explain the reason for this volatility? I mean, uh, if uh, like one quarter it was eleven rupees per demand, then it comes now it was I think it was six rupees per demand. Uh, if you could, can you explain this volatility? See, you're taking the wrong uh, number. Number of demand will not really work because people will open whether they transact in that demand or not will have to be. Mm-hmm. The number of transactions which are occurring, which cause so opening of DMAT can be opened at any point of time. CDSL mm-hmm. does not earn any money out of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the number of transactions which happen, or the pledge transactions happen, or the debit transaction happen, which contributes to the uh, this particular income. Okay. So can you uh, like give some metric uh, year on year what has exactly changed like uh, if you could de- give us the percentage of delivery turnover as a percentage of market volume. turnover? If you see basically the delivery based volumes on the exchanges, there is there will be some amount of linkage to that because it's how much delivery is happening on the stock exchange platforms. It will lead mm-hmm. to how many will debit will have to happen. Can you quantify? I mean, last year, what, what was it, and what what is it currently in the F524 on an average and F523 on an average? What what has it been? In terms of revenue number? Uh, yes, I mean in terms of the delivery turnover percentage, and that you were mentioning. Website, you will get from the exchange website. I'm. You ask me how it should be computed, but it's a combination. See again. You cannot uh, have one number. It's a multitude of uh, transactions which are happening. How many very pledging is happening? How many very repledging is happening? Mm-hmm. How many location is happening? How many uh, sales are happening? Mm-hmm. So you ask me for some number, so I gave you that number. So you will have to look at how much is, but that will not give you a one is to one correlation. It will be depending on the volume in the market, how many is translating into delivery, how many margin pledges, etc. have been created. So it's something which cannot be uh, done as one is to one. That is all I'm trying to say. Okay. I understand. Okay, so that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanket Gouda from Evindus Park. Please go ahead. Yeah, th- thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, Gil, sir, I have a few data keeping questions which you usually disclose. Uh, can you share the uh, unlisted income uh, in, in the annual short charges, uh, pledge income uh, in the uh, in the transaction charges, and impairment cost for the fourth quarter and the full year? That's, that's the question number one. And, yeah, and if, you can repeat, uh, if you can repeat cash income for the fourth quarter, it will be useful. I missed that number. And that's my first question. Sure. So, total unlisted income for the quarter ended March is 1 crore and 85 lakhs. For full year, it is uh, 545, uh, 5.45 crore. Uh, yep. Market price income for the quarter is 5.95 crore. Okay. And, uh, uh, for the full year, sir? Uh, sorry, if you can use the pledge income for the full year too? Full year is uh, 17 and a half crore. Uh, okay, and, and if you can give impairment cost? Sorry? Impairment. In, impairment uh, cost? I, 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 I am on that. See, uh, impairment, uh, uh, there is a cost of 8 crore for the full financial year on impairment, and for the quarter, we have a reversal of 1.11 crore. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, 1.1 crore reversal. And, and, and if you can tell me, cash income, if you can repeat, that would be issue. Cash income for the quarter uh, is 9.37 crore. Great. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you. That's on the data keeping. Uh, okay, the next question I had, had uh, was, was largely with the uh, uh, the tech cost. Uh, see, sir, this, uh, I understand that uh, you need to increase in the tech and all those things, but 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 uh, uh, um, from 38 crores, it's going to 63 crores is a meaningful jump uh, in the current year. 
so so uh, this 63 crore also included uh, you need to, uh, included repository tech insurance repository tech cost because because you wanted to uh, scale it up given given the regulations were coming up uh, uh, and 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 if that is the case do we expect this number to tone down a bit going ahead given 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 we have already done 65% year on increase in the tech cost in the current year I just 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 wanted to understand how should we look at this number going ahead see again as i am telling you reforms are going to continue there are going to be changes in the rules the regulatory rules there are going to be changes in newer products coming in there is a potential of uh, growth which is possible uh so it will be difficult one is we don't give any future uh, really outlook but also it will be difficult to really predict at this stage we have to ensure that this is well is the bread and butter of cdsl technology and people are its bread and butter so we have to not only ensure that the current state of volume is continuing but even the potential future which could potentially come in is kind of planned and factored in because building a technology platform it takes its own time and therefore this is a process which is continuously going to evolve as we are going to move forward and we're going to get more and more really sophisticated to ensure that the value proposition uh, really remains uh, so but but the 63.3 crores for the full year does it include something related to insurance which you might have done as one off in the current year but might not be repeated in the next year uh the insurance is a uh, very some part of it a small part of it okay. again uh, we'll have to see how it pans out it will be difficult for me to give you a specific answer whether this will repeat again or not repeat again it will have to be seen as to how uh, the policy because the entire framework as i told earlier is getting evolved and we have to ensure that the technology is really up to speed to ensure that the value proposition remains and so the reason i am asking this question is that given given insurance will be a new opportunity and and it's a big one time big opportunity uh, which will uh, suddenly come in fy 25 then then uh, then are we required to do more than expected additional tech cost in uh, in fy 25 to uh, fulfill the requirement of insurance or 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 we are up to the mark with respect to that requirement see yeah. again as i am telling you that the insurance sector framework is evolving mm-hmm. it is it is not that it has evolved and we are trying to build it so we are trying to, to repeat the same question again in different words i am trying to again and again tell you that we'll have to wait and watch we will have to ensure and as you have seen that we have kept the pace with what the volume is there to ensure that the technology is in sync with that that's all i'm saying got it sir uh, and and the second next question is on insurance uh, insurance charges sir you said that 25 rupees is uh, amc and 20 rupees is eia creation cost uh, but 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 i believe these charges are very competitive uh, these are rack cost but actual uh, cost when you onboard a insurance company uh, might be meaningfully lower uh, or or you strictly follow the rack charges when you open uh, the annual issue charges or or the um, or or amc charges we again these are some things we don't put out in public domain uh these are all uh, things which remains within our system but however if you have any specific question to the extent we put it out in the public domain you send us an email we will have it replied got it got it sir. and 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 on insurance sorry on insurance one more thing compared to last year if you are aware sir and uh, uh, how many number of companies i have have increased for us because we were predominantly in the past uh, life insurance company uh, tie up company we had very limited uh, exposure to general and health and and honestly the bigger opportunity in in, in the new norms is sitting in general insurance mm-hmm. just just wanted to understand whether whether we have on the numbers the specific customers type of customers etc we don't give out in the public domain so i would really request it that uh, what we can we can what we cannot we cannot got it sir and and lastly on capital market record i think you 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 published that number in the annual report 
it will be great i think last time also you said the number is 6.5 uh, crores number of uh, uh, capital market records with us in kyc business if you can spell out that number for the full year it will be useful sir yeah we will see as part of the annual report uh, it will come out when uh, uh, we come out very shortly okay mm, thank you thank you very much sir that's it from my side thank you a reminder to all participants you may press star and want to ask question the next question is from the line of supratim datta from ambed capital please go ahead uh, hi uh, thanks a lot um, you know this is a follow up question just wanted to understand on you know the management transition so i currently understand that you know a shortlist has been submitted to sebi just i wanted to understand what are the timelines and you expect sebi to get back and could you uh, discuss you know who are on the shortlist as well you know that could be very helpful thank you uh so the process is is on it's a confidential list uh, and uh, whenever uh, there is a steady kind of a standard operating procedure at the time when it is required to be to be announced uh, cdsl would promptly announce that So at this stage, uh, it will not be possible to uh, reveal because that is uh, basically the SOP would not require us to. Okay, but you know, how much time would this process typically take? I it will be difficult for me to answer that question. That is on very okay. heavy. Okay, I'll okay. answer that. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Miraj from Aryan Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you for the follow-up opportunity. I just want to understand that the co- technological costs that we've taken for uh, the T plus uh, zero settlement. Uh, do we have to spend any more for the instant settlement part, or have we already incurred that? Because that will be the next stage of development. the constant process of uh, in evolution so there's t plus 0 tomorrow there is instant tomorrow uh, probably after some time there may be some other reform so that will be a continuous process because the framework will have to be spelled out and based on that what is the cost on infra applications uh, all that will have to be assessed after that so it will not be possible to uh, specifically answer whether uh, the cost has been incurred or not because it's a process of really evolution at this stage in terms of really the instances in terms of how the framework will work etc and so okay thank you so much all the best for the future sir thank you thank you If there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Nihal Vora for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Yeah, I would uh, like to thank you for all your questions. I wish you all remain safe and secure. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. On behalf of HDFC Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.